Hey everyone, this is three questions with my buddy Brad Gustafson. <laughs> All right, buddy, it's been a long time since I've chatted with you. And so, hey, this is um, one thing I always say about Brad, and this is true. If my kids could get go to any school, it I would love Brad to be their principal. So I just really appreciate um, having the time to chat. And so I got three questions for you, Brad. And I know that you've inspired a lot of people in your education career. I know you've had contact with a lot of great teachers um, in your work. So when you look back at your career as a student, who was a teacher that stuck out to you, inspired you, and and why did they do that? Thanks, George. Great to connect. And judging from some of the pictures you've shared of your kids on like Instagram, we would take them at our school in a heartbeat. Oh my gosh, they are amazing and so cute. So um, so a teacher who inspired me and that I remember to this day, first I'll start by saying like, I remember every elementary teacher that I that I had and I there's a reason for that, right? But then in reflecting on certain ones that made differences, like uh, honestly, I feel like every single one connected in a different way. And that's a beauty of teaching. You don't have to be like Mrs. Nielsen, you can be, Mr. Curl, you can be you and love right. kids and make like a life changing difference. But, but it just so happens like my second grade teacher, Mrs. Nielsen is one who I'll always remember. And the funny thing is in thinking about this, um, I don't know how to say that. Like she, if you picture, if you just picture a second grade teacher, she might not like, she was, I don't know, maybe six, five, she might've been taller than you, George. Oh, wow. right. Right. Yeah, so she had a commanding presence and a big booming voice. So not exactly your stereotypical kind of nurturing personality, but yet the warmth she exuded. And I'll always remember, she would always come up to me. And when I was talking to her, she'd like go like this. This will sound kind of sappy, but she would just feel my cheeks and say, oh, so soft and just little things like that. And it wasn't weird, even though it maybe sounds weird how I'm saying it. But like, I remember those things almost 40 years later. And then the fact how she saw me and like, let me bring in my Legos for... Uh, show and tell or sharing, they call it in this day and age. So like, why do I remember all that? It's it's how she made me feel. It's how she made me feel when I brought in, there was one Lego set that I wanted to bring in. And in my mom's wisdom was like, you should not bring that Lego set in. It'll get, it'll get wrecked and lost. So, but I got to bring a picture in. Um, and for some strange, weird reason, I was in like doing what I do on Saturdays in the photo. I was in my underwear building Legos and my mom had taken a picture, which we should, we should just start this show over and re-record, George. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring your ratings down in one single minute. But anyway, um, my mom put a like a post-it over the underwear part just so my classmates right. could see the Lego set. Well, kid in my class ripped, ripped the post-it off, and it was the big second-grade scandal. But even how Mrs. Nielsen came to my rescue and made me mm -hmm. feel safe after that scandalous moment. So... All the things, uh, sh she did them. And then every year down the road, teachers did different things that, that meant a lot. Well, it's, it's interesting that you say that because I, I, I've had conversations with some educators and I'll say like, hey, we're going to ask you about like a teacher that inspired you. And uh, some of them have said, I can't really pick one, which is sad, right? And I also remember every single teacher. Like I remember every teacher I had, right? And some of them not as fondly as others, right? But even some of the ones that I was, you know, struggled with, it's easy for me to look back and go, yeah, I can understand why I struggled because I was terrible then, right? Mm -hmm. But there, like when you were talking, there was one uh, teacher I had, her name is Miss Butler. She's my grade four teacher. And she actually, I love the, I know it's embarrassing. I love the Smurfs, okay? So I'm like- There's a nothing Smurf embarrassing kid. about that at all. I, I don't know. I don't know. It was like, a, I don't know. I got really into the Smurfs when I was a kid. And she knew this about me and she uh, wrote um, uh, at the end of the year, she wrote on a Smurf cutout, all the things that she appreciated about me. And one of the things she talked about was uh, how much she loved when I brought pizza to uh, the classroom. And there's a reason she said that, right? Because uh, our, we had <clears throat> Greek family. We were the only restaurant in the entire community that actually made pizza, right? Mm -hmm. And it just made me really feel appreciated. And there's like little things that I don't think I didn't feel were noticed in other cases. And I remember, like, I still remember that card to this day. And so just, it's just kind of, you know, you think about those little moments, those little interactions and, and how powerful they are. So it's Miss Nielsen, right? Is that what you said? 
Yeah, yeah. Shout out Miss Nielsen. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so the next question. George, I got to share one quick thing. So Good. here, this is just by chance, but like I have this by my desk. This is my first grade class. Oh, cool. My, my friends, Miss yeah. Deuce Babic, but like, why do kids, why would a principal keep stuff like this in his office? And it's because like the people, the right. people matter and these life changing, like in the U S it's a nine month school year. I don't know what you all, or I shouldn't say that a lot of schools have kind of a yeah. nine month year here. Like that's a big chunk of a kid's totally. a kid's life. And like, I'll, I'll take these kids and relationships with me forever. Yeah. That's huge. And I, I appreciate that. So uh, you are currently a principal and I'm sure that uh, we have mutual friends who are administrators and there's a lot of people that we can talk about that have had an impact. So in your journey as an administrator, like when you think of like a great principal, great superintendent, who's the first person that pops to your mind? Cause I know you can name a ton and mm -hmm. what makes them stick out? Yeah. Well, the one just without thinking or working hard at all is Tony Sinanis, who I know you're uh, friends with, yep. but he just like, for me personally, he just shows up authentically, um, not perfectly like any of us are, but just like, this is who I am and let's do really great things on behalf of kids together. And he just, everything, all my interactions with Tony and a lot of collaborative projects we used to do when we, um, cause he, I think he's at the district level now, but just, it was, it exuded kids and like mm -hmm. authentically amplifying their voices, not just like the principal message, but really like, what do you, what do you want to say? You know what I mean? Well, so Tony, you know, and I appreciate him tremendously and someone I consider a very good friend. And like an interesting thing about Tony is like, I'm obviously Greek. Um, I don't speak Greek. I speak legal El Nika just a little bit. Um, but Tony's very fluent. And um, I was, I can't remember what happened, but I was talking to him or I was uh, one day and my mom was there. I said, do you want to talk to my friend, Tony? And my mom, when she can, you know, talk Greek with someone, she's super excited, right? Cause she's from Greece and, and, you know, she doesn't get to talk with her son and she, she really appreciates that. And what's funny is they just like talk forever, right? I don't know what's going on cause I can't understand anything. And this was years ago that this happened. And I think it was Tony's birthday just recently. And <laughs> My mom on Facebook, who's like 83, 84 years old, <laughs> is like, happy birthday, Tony. And just like, you know, what, like what a personality, right? That one conversation, they've stayed connected on Facebook and seeing that. And I think, you know, a lot of those qualities that we talk about, um, or I think, you know, don't just happen in school, but are part of the, uh, of the nature of really great administrators. So I'm going to give Tony a very special... <laughs> Nice. All right. Give your, was, hold on ahead. a sec. Give give your background one of those sound effects. Your background just looks stunning. It looks like airbrushed or something. Incredible. <laughs> yeah, just green screen. So uh, um, one other thing about Tony, and this is like a trait that I aspired to do, yeah. but like how he thinks differently about things. And one example would be like when a lot of schools are writing uh, vision statements, at the, the um, port, vision portfolio, stuff like that. Not that those things are bad, but he actually worked with his staff and school community and kiddos to create like a, I think it was a one minute school vision video where right. it just came to life. This is not only who we aspire to be, but this is who we are right now. And just little looking at things differently, like that's just something I've always appreciated about him. So. Yeah, Tony, Tony is awesome. Okay, so last question here. All right. The last question, and I didn't tell you any of these questions ahead of time. We talked. No, for like but I, I watch. I watch the show. Joe. Okay, good. Uh, so you know what's coming. Show. Okay, yeah. so you look back, and I think uh, you know we've talked a lot about you know our careers, uh, places where we're like we could have done better there, and you have a lot of you know experience in education. So when you look back at your first year as a teacher what advice would you give yourself based on what you, you know, didn't do back then? What, what, what advice would you give, you know, to, to Brad, the first year teacher? Yeah, that's a hard one. I think I've, you're I've, so uh, you're just perfect. No, no, it's not that. I mean, yeah, it's a lot laundry list here. Right. But <laughs> like part of it, here's why I struggle. Here's the hesitation. Right. Like the thing that bubbles up right away is like, you don't need to work until 10 PM every night. Right. And there were times, like there were honestly even times where I 
that's before even going home to my wife and um, eventually my family. And that's not like a healthy thing. But the hard part, George, and the reason I hesitated and wouldn't even tell people not to do that, you kind of also got to do what brings you joy. And part of what brought me joy was invest, you know, creating curriculum and bulletin boards and things right. that that matter to me and that I like doing and phonics activity sheets and things like that. So sorry to give you such just a mush of an answer, but like I would I would try to say like you don't have to be perfect. You really here here it is. Here's my real answer. Sure. Like just show up and authentically love kids and don't worry so much about the room, Brad. Don't worry so much about like X, Y, and Z because whether you're at a parent teacher conference uh, anyway, on the street, like what I hear for, and see, like the thing that matters most is how well do you know my kiddo and how will you help them and how will you personalize like that really, um, like that's like the difference maker and that like seeing the sparkle in the eye when a teacher talks about a kiddo and seeing the sparkle right. in a parent's eye when they're seeing that, like that seems to be really, really powerful stuff. And I guess maybe I wish I would have been clued into that not that I didn't do those things or care, but but I certainly did a lot of other stuff and invested heavy hours in to stuff that maybe wasn't quite as impactful. Right, and you know, and like those elements, uh, I remember uh, David Pesek, he was a principal in the school district and someone I really looked up to. And he shared something with me and I always have thought about it. And it was like a really interesting statement. And he said to me, a teacher that's, great with relationships, but struggles with curriculum will last a lot longer than one that's the opposite. And that always resonated with me. And like the perception for some, when I share that is like, so you don't think they should be good at curriculum? I, no, that's not what I'm saying at all. I think that can be developed, but if you don't have like an authentic love for kids, you're probably in the wrong profession, right? That, that, that's me, it, you know, that you don't, and it, it doesn't mean you're being their best friend, uh, or anything like that, or you have to be the cool teacher. Uh -huh. You know, I've had conversations with educators about that, you know, though I, that doesn't necessarily, but like, I need to know as a parent that you care about my kids that, you know, I'm talking my own children right now. Right. And if I, if I don't feel that not as like, I'll, I'll you know, I'm not as worried about the curriculum. you right. And I think, I think a lot of parents feel very similar. Like, you know, I know there's parents that just like, I want my kid to get, you know, know everything and grades and et cetera. And I'm sure, you know, and I different, you know, strokes for different people. And I, I get that, but it, it is important for me as a parent to feel that. So I appreciate that. And I'm going to give you a, Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, when I growing up, I lived down oh, the street no. from jumping Jump in Jim Bronzel and I would trick or treat at his house because he was just a couple neighborhoods. So, kill, killer bees, killer bees. I remember yeah. the joke. Uh, who's okay. the uh, who's the other guy? Jumping Jim Brazel and I'm not sure. You can't remember? No, oh, man. Um, you don't know? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, one quick thing. So, like you and I have talked quite about about this in the past, like. When we say relationships matter, I don't think either of us are saying other kinds of results don't matter. Like we're actually no. not saying that. No. Uh, and that in connecting to like Mrs. Nielsen and a lot of the other life-changing teachers I had, I felt loved and seen and heard, but I also felt like they pushed me to grow and challenge me where I needed to right. in unique ways. And I think that's probably subconsciously even, even though I can't necessarily cite a super ton of academic examples, I know that that element what was there as well. So I can actually cite uh, academic research that backs up what you're saying. To be honest with you, in Innovate Inside the Box, I referenced a article or a study done by Ohio State that basically said simply greeting kids at the door actually improved uh, reading and writing or uh, reading, writing, and uh, math scores. And so the thing is, you don't have to have that research for me to understand that. Because, the, and I always share this with people is that if you, if people feel valued when they walk into your classroom, of course, they're going to do better. Like it's, everybody knows this. That's how I'd react. If I work for somebody who makes me feel valued, I'm going to do better for them. If I work for someone that I'm totally terrified of, you might get results out of me, but it's not going to be long lasting. And I'm going to look to get out of there as soon as possible. And if I don't feel you care about me at all, then I'm going to lose purpose in my job and feel like this is not the place for me. So like, I think to, for me, the easiest way to make that connection is like, what would you want as an adult? Like no teacher would want to work for a principal who didn't actually care for them. Right. I wouldn't. And I, and I'm, you know, and I, I think it's the same with our kids. So Brad, 
Thanks for doing your questions. We're out. Have a great day, everybody.